While the N64 is perhaps best known for its awesome 3D platformers, it's sometimes hard to forget the slew of 2D ones which also grace the console. While some reached great heights such as Mischief Makers, others fell by the wayside and ended up in obscurity. After being surprised by just how good the N64 version of Tarzan was, I went looking for another kid-friendly 2D platformer and I stumbled across a game which I had looked past for many years. Released in the year 2000, Tigger's Honey Hunt was indeed another 2D platformer, but upon learning that it was made by New Kidco, my heart instantly sank. They had already butchered and released terrible games from the Sesame Street franchise, so I had little faith that they would do anything solid with the Winnie the Pooh license. On paper the game impressed, there are 9 large levels to complete, as well as additional hidden ones, support for up to 4 players, challenges and mini-games to overcome, and secrets and rewards to unlock. Add to this the ability to learn new moves, and things did look a little rosier than I was perhaps expecting. Right off the bat though I will say this, if you were hoping for a 2D platformer to rival those from the 16-bit area, then you will be in for a bit of a shock. Like the Sesame Street games before it, this is designed and aimed at pleasing the younger gamer. The story begins with Pooh Bear who is in a kerfuffle as his honey stash is running low and he has a party to get ready for. Along hops Tigger, who being the ADD fueled maniac he is, agrees to venture out into the 100 acre wood to find the pots of golden goodness to get the party started. I'm a huge animation fan, and so when I first glanced on the in-game graphics I was pleasantly surprised. You see, the art style the developers went for ties in well with the storybooks and animated series of my childhood. It's hard to describe, but as you can see, it's an almost watercolour look to it. Coming from New Kidco, I was expecting some horrible polygons and hashed together character models. But as you walk your way through the game and meet the other characters from the books, you will be happy to see that effort was put into creating a world which is not just unique, but it also does feel alive. Speaking of other characters, as you bump into them they'll each give you different challenges which range from collecting objects to help them in that particular level, to doing challenges which will provide you with new moves. In the spirit of most games of the time, you will need to backtrack at times to previous levels to use these newly gained abilities to access new harder to reach areas which you were not able to get to before. It does add some longevity to the game, but for anyone over the age of 10 this does little more than adding another quick playthrough each of the game's levels. You can also collect photographs in the levels, and these are stored in the game's photo album. It's nothing more than some static shots, but if you enjoy a good collectathon, then you may enjoy a quick flick through this album for its additional artwork. The game handles very well, surprisingly. The only drawback is when you first start playing, it can be a little bit hard to handle Tigger. When you are so used to characters smoothly running along, Tigger's momentum bouncing can make judging jumps, and the timing of them incredibly difficult. Everything else is responsive though, and the ability to do a flapping jump aids you in your movement in the game and a considerable amount of time when you first unlock it. The music is as whimsical and child friendly as you can imagine. The Winnie the Pooh theme is here and the music gently plays along in the background. It's not intrusive in the slightest, and at times you will forget it's there altogether. The same too can be said for the game's sound effects. They are well done, but a little more polish on the character voices would have gone a long way. As I mentioned previously, the game is also touted as a 4 player game. Whilst the main story is a solo experience, there are multiplayer games to take part in. This is by far the weakest part of the game. There are three mini games for you to play. Rock Paper Series is a 2 player mini game which as the name suggests a classic interpretation. Secondly you have a memory game which forces you to remember button presses. Both of these are 2 player experiences. The only 4 player aspect of the entire game is a single mini game where you throw sticks into a river and watch them race. It's a total con, and to have called this a 4 player game given the fact that after playing this more than twice there's no fun to be had in it is a bit of a stretch of the game's promotion. In my opinion you should never play this expecting a multiplayer blast, but as a single player game it was surprisingly fun if you can get past the initially fiddly controls. The art style is excellent, and the variation between levels is well done, and it makes the 100 acre wood feel alive and living as it's ever been on screen. If you love the Pooh universe, then seeing the other characters pop up should give you a kick, and the level design will also have you hunting to collect everything there is to be found. 
It's short for an experienced gamer, but if the huge 3D platformers require too much of your time, then you couldn't really go all that wrong with completing Tigger's Honey Hunt if you have a few spare hours one day. So for today's topic of conversation, I'd love to know what classic children's book or cartoon you'd love to be made into a video game. There is one rule though, it's got to be one which has not been used before. So let me know your ideas in the comments section down below, and until next time.